The next item of business is the second stage of the pension schemes bill. And I call the Minister for Communities to move the motion. Uh, last can call you. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. I beg to move that the second stage of the pensions schemes bill be agreed. The pensions landscape has or, changed. Uh, uh, Matthew, formally move the motion at this stage. I beg to move. The second stage of the bill has been moved, and in accordance with the convention, the business committee has allocated that there will not be any time limit on this debate. So now I call the minister to move the motion. Thank you. Um, I beg to move that the second stage of the pension schemes bill be agreed. The pensions landscape has changed significantly over recent years, and as a result, the way in which people can save and access their pension savings has been transformed. The automatic enrolment has resulted in a significant increase in the number of people being enrolled into a workplace pension. Master trusts have become a popular vehicle for employers particularly small and micro-employers seeking to enrol employees into an occupational pension scheme. A master trust is a form of multi-employer occupational pension scheme for unconnected employers, where instead of the employer setting up their own pension scheme, the scheme is provided by an external organisation which runs a pension scheme for numerous employers. Such schemes offer benefits to both employers and members. They can spur competition in the market and allow for the economies of scale and providing value for money. They are also an efficient solution for smaller employers for whom setting up an individual pension scheme would be difficult and prohibitively expensive. Current, currently, master trusts here are regulated in accordance with the occupational pensions legislation. However, that legislation was developed with single employer pension schemes in mind and consequently it does not take into consideration the different structures and dynamics of the master trusts which give rise to different risks. The bill is a response not to a fundamental problem with master trusts but rather to the exponential growth in membership. For example, in 2010 across Britain, and here, there were 0.2 million members of, them, of Master Trusts. By November 2019, there were 16 million members in 37 Master Trust schemes, holding more than 36 billion in assets. The introduction of a new authorisation regime is designed to address the legislative gap and to try and prevent problems arising in the future. Similar provision was made for England, Scotland and Wales in the Pension Schemes Act of 2017. The aim is to ensure that essential protections are put in place in a way which is appropriate to the risks experienced by master trusts. Under the new regime, master trusts will be pro prohibited from operating unless authorised by the pensions regulator. The bill sets out specific requirements which must be met in order for a scheme to be authorised. For example, the persons involved with the scheme are fit and proper persons. The scheme is financially sustainable. The scheme funder has met specific requirements. The systems and processes used in relation to the scheme's governance and administration are sufficient to ensure that the scheme runs effectively and that the scheme has adequate Continuity, or continuity strategies in the event of something going wrong or the master trust otherwise seeking to exit the market. In addition to this, the regulator will also be given new powers to supervise master trusts, enabling it to intervene where schemes are at risk of falling below the required standards. The regulator must be notified in writing if significant events occur in relation to an authorised master trust scheme. The intention is that the list of significant events will capture events which could affect the ability of a master trust to continue meeting the authorisation criteria. For example, the scheme may have a change of trustee, and as the fitness and propriety of a trustee is linked to the authorisation criteria, the regulator must be informed of such a change so that the new trustee may be assessed against the relevant standards. The regulator will always seek to support and assist those involved in the running of a pension scheme. However, 
there needs to be clear consequences for schemes which fail to comply with their duties. Information gathering is an important part of the regulator's toolkit, and the Pensions Northern Ireland Order 2005, which already makes it a criminal offence for individuals to fail to provide information request, requested by the regulator. The Bill extends these powers to include those involved in the running of master trusts. Ultimately, the regulator also has a power to withdraw a scheme's authorisation, essentially forcing it to leave the market. These powers are, are designed to ensure that those managing master trust schemes continue to work to protect the interests of members. I now move to the remaining provisions of the Bill, and since the introduction of new pension freedoms in April 2015, which enable many people aged 55 and over to ex access their pension schemes or savings more flexibly, individuals faced a range of potential barriers, including incurring early exit charges when seeking to access their savings. Schedule 18 of the, the Pensions Act Northern Ireland 2015 allows the Department to make regulations that restrict charges or impose requirements on certain pension schemes. This bill amends the 2015 Act to allow the Department to make regulations to provide that any term in a contract which is inconsistent with something, something in the regulations is overridden. For example, if a contract that is in place between the trustees or managers of the scheme and a person who provides services to the scheme permits an early exit charge that is higher than the level of the early exit charge cap when it is introduced, this would allow that term to be overridden. The bill therefore supports the policy intention of capping early exit charges in occupational pension schemes and banning member born commission arising out of existing contracts for those which were entered um, into before April 6 of April 2016. So in conclusion, the pensions market is continually evolving and modernising, and it is clear that there is a need to ensure there is adequate regulation for, the, for master trusts given how they have developed since the introduction of automatic enrolment. I think by most standards, automatic enrolment can be considered a success. However, we cannot take this success for granted, and I am sure members will agree we must take action now to ensure the pension scheme members are only enrolled in high quality schemes which look after their interests. Well managed schemes will help to secure pensions income in retirement. The pension schemes bill therefore is firmly centred on further safeguarding workers' pensions. I believe this is something we can all support and I commend this bill to the Assembly. Gormag. I now call on the Chairperson for the Committee for Communities, Paula Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The Committee for Communities welcomes this bill. Members of the committee were briefed by departmental officials at their meeting on the 17th of June when we heard that this bill seeks to introduce a new regulatory framework for master trusts in Northern Ireland. There have been, over the past few years, sweeping changes in relation to pensions and how people can access their pensions. Master trusts have now become very popular as a result of these changes. As the Minister has said, a master trust is a multi-employer occupational scheme for unconnected employers run on behalf of these organisations by an external organisation. The benefits of this type of scheme are particularly good for smaller employers, as they do not have to set up a scheme themselves, something which is not only costly, but is very difficult to do. This maybe explains why this type of scheme is so popular, going, growing from a membership of 0.2 million in 2010 to 16 million in 2019. Whilst the growth in this type of scheme is to be welcomed, there is obviously a need to have appropriate measures in place to ensure that the risks are managed. Fundamentally, that is what this bill will do. It will ensure that no master trust scheme can operate without authorisation from the pensions regulator and that specific requirements must be met. This is necessary and welcomed. Another area that the bill deals with is administration charges. With the pension changes that I referred to earlier, people have been faced with early exit charges when trying to access their pension savings. 
members were informed by departmental officials that this bill will cap early exit charges in occupational pension schemes, and again, this has to be something that is welcomed, and it, is, and it will enable people to get more from their hard-earned savings. Mr Deputy Speaker, overall, this bill is designed to safeguard workers' pensions and to ensure good governance. The committee is supportive of the principles of the bill and looks forward to considering it further during committee stage. I call Sinead Innes. Uh, last can call you. Um, the pensions market continues to grow and evolve, uh, particularly since the introduction of the um, automatic enrolment, and so too, too does the manner in which people manage and access their pensions. It is necessary, therefore, that the regulations keep pace with this. This bill, as I understand it, aims to put in place additional safeguards for people saving into master trust schemes. It increases the power of the regulator and allows for, amongst other things, the introduction of a cap on early exit charges in certain occupational pension schemes. It is vital that people can have confidence in these schemes, and that will be my focus as we continue to scrutinise this bill at the next stage. I call Mark Durgan. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Minister for bringing the bill and explaining its functions, and the Committee Chair for outlining its merits to the House this morning. As outlined, this bill corresponds to the Westminster Pension Schemes Act 2017 and seeks to introduce a new regulatory framework for master trusts here. This includes an authorisation and supervision regime for master trusts and, crucially, a cap on early exit charges and member-born commission that arise under existing arrangements as well as under new arrangements. We recognise and support the need to ensure that there is adequate regulation for master trusts as they have developed since the introduction of auto enrolment. Master trusts operate on a massive scale and most are run on a profit basis. Currently, however, they are not subject to the same regulation as contract-based workplace pensions. There is isn't a requirement for a licence to operate and limited barriers to entry. There is also little guidance on who can become a trustee and no infrastructure in place to support the wind-up of a failed trust. Given that the savings and pensions of hundreds of thousands of employees here and their employer contributions are at risk, we cannot allow this to continue. This bill is a very narrow one, and that is certainly no criticism of the Minister or the legislation itself, but I am not sure if the Minister intends to bring forward any other pensions bills in the course of this mandate, and perhaps she can address that later. But one issue that the SDLP would love to see resolved is that which has seen so many women born in the 1950s here left behind by the accelerated equalisation of the state pension age. These women made their plans for retirement only to find their retirement age sneakily pushed back by a Tory-led coalition in Westminster, an unjust move that was endorsed by and voted for uh, in this assembly by a majority, including the, the Minister's party. I have raised this issue previously uh, with, with Minister Hargey, but I would be keen to hear if the, the, the Minister has any plans to do anything to address this. I'm conscious also, sorry, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm straying from the narrow scope of this bill, but this is a massive injustice. This bill itself should help create trust and pension savings. I think it's fair to say, well at least I hope it's fair to say, that we all want workers to be able to attain a standard of living that will be consistent in allowing them to save while in work in order to have dignity in retirement, secure in the knowledge that a regular income from a state pension and a workplace pension will allow them to enjoy their retirement without financial worry and without living in pensioner poverty. No one should have to live with the fear of not being able to afford to grow old. We need to deliver the appropriate level of protection for savers, and this bill is a very important step forward in that regard. I support the bill. Nicole Kelly Armstrong. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, as we know, pensions is a devolved matter, but policy and legislation have acted in accordance with sections 87 of the Northern 
or sorry, the Northern Ireland Act 1998 to ensure pension provision corresponds to the rest of the UK. I'll not go over the areas that have already been spoken about by um, other members of the committee. The committee has been supportive of this bill going forward, and the work regarding the Master Trust scheme is, of course, very important. Um, just to go back to what others have mentioned about the pensions regulator, it means then that this legislation, uh, that through this reg leg legislation, sorry, the regulator is able to take action earlier when employers put the viability of their pension schemes at risk, specifically in relation to Northern Ireland Clause 117 introduces. Schedule 8, which makes provision for Northern Ireland corresponding to those made for England, Wales and Scotland. But one thing I would like to draw to attention um, to everyone out there is the one thing that's coming through on this, and pensions can be quite complicated, and certainly master trust schemes are complicated, but it is bringing forward a simplification for those of us who have pensions who have jumped about across different jobs over the years, because the pensions dashboard, thank goodness, is going to enable people to see where their money is in one place, whether they have five pensions, one pension or ten pensions. Um, I'm certainly very welcoming of that. Um, as others have said, we now head towards the committee stage. Having read through the correspondence that we have received as committee on the consultations that have happened, the fact that political parties, unions and other employers have been supportive of this bill just goes to show how important it is that we move this through and we support the Minister in doing so. I now call on the Minister for Communities, uh, Karen McKillen, to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Thank you. Um, so thank you everybody for all your contributions. I have to say, no offence Jerry, who's very good at all this, but when I was reading it, it was a lot. I had to read it a couple of times to try and get a sense of it. But one thing I did, thank you, one thing I did understand very clearly that it was a complete mess. So the point that you made, I'll start with first. Um, a lot of people, particularly those earning 30,000 or less, may have moved, particularly if they're working in the private sector or even community voluntary sector. The precarious nature of funding, we're moving from one place to another and could have had a lot of wee small pensions. By the time they even try to consolidate those or even cash them in, they were getting charged small fortunes. It just wasn't worth their while. Um, and it's not that you want to deny anybody else a living managing those pensions, but they were operating within the guidelines and within the regulations and we need to change the legislation to ensure that people know exactly where their money is and their, their savings are protected. So I think that's really important. I think this is the first bill that we have done that's gone through the normal passage, which is again to be welcome because we've all dealt with a lot of accelerated passage legislation, particularly from this department, given COVID and everything else. So I look forward to you know, going through the committee in answer to any further bills regarding pension age or, or even regarding pensions. I mean, you'll know a lot of comes from Westminster. I'm hoping to get this as far as I can so Dirty Harkey can come back and finish all this off. <laughs> and, but the good thing about it is, is that everyone sees the need to have legislation to protect workers. Um, I'm pleased that trade unions are supportive of this. I'm pleased that even people working within the pensions business are supportive of this and you know clear legislation clear regulations is better for people who are investing their life savings and pensions and so this bill closes many of those gaps so thank you very much i beg to move <clears throat> members the question is that the second stage of the pension schemes bill be agreed all those in favor say aye, aye. contrary no the ayes have it the ayes have it and that concludes the second stage of the Pension Schemes Bill. I'd ask members to take their ease for a few moments. <laughs>